Good morning, as they say in Osaka, Japan, Ohio. I just got a cup sent to me. Opened it yesterday. Thank you, whoever you are out there. Sent me a coffee cup, a mug. I got to show it to you next time. Just like this one. But on the side, it says, Ohio. People seem to like to be able to say good morning in Japanese. I do. It's so much better than hello, hi, what's up, Ohio. Um, we're reading now in Scripture, 1 Samuel, where if you read it quickly through and don't stop and chew it and meditate on it. Oh, by the way, before I even go there, in October, we're having that great intensive three days, Monday night through Wednesday, 12 noon for pastors, their wives or associate pastors or missionaries who want to come and have intense one-hour sessions throughout that whole time, be in the prayer meeting Tuesday night with the congregation, praying, being prayed for that God will use you in a greater way. Yeah, but you don't know what denomination I'm in. I don't believe exactly like you. Whatever. We're Christians. There's only one body of Christ. We should all be fighting for one another, not against one another. If you're born again and preaching the gospel, come on. Let's learn uh, how to do it better. Let's study the word of God and pray and worship. Uh, just go to brooklyntabernacle.org and learn about the three-day intensive. It's in October. I always forget the dates of it, but um, uh, you'll see it there. Come to beautiful Garden of Eden-like downtown Brooklyn. Um, we're reading, so here, here's, here's where you read and you have to stop and say, why did God put that in the Bible? It's inspired, but por qué? Why? Now, Saul was going along one side of the mountain. No. Verse 24, 1 Samuel 23. So they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. This is the uh, army. Now, David and his men were in the desert of Maon, in the Arabah, south of Jeshimon. And Saul and his men began to search. And when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Maon. And when Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Maon in pursuit of David. It looks like curtains. It's over now. David's been shaking and sliding and staying alive, staying alive, all that. And now it looks like it's up. Wait till you see what God can do. Saul was going along one side of the mountain and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. So now it's... I mean, Saul has him now. It's going to end now. David's the anointed, but it's, it's over. How, how are you going to beat the king and his whole army if you're just a guy alone with some men? As Saul and his forces were closing in on David and his men to capture them. A messenger came to Saul, saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet the Philistines. And why? that is why they call this place, listen and be patient with my pronunciation, Sela, S-E-L-A, Hamalakoth, Hamalakoth which means, in my margin, it says, uh, means the rock of parting because Saul took off and left off chasing David. And David went up from there and lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. All right, so that's in the Bible. 3,000 years ago, Saul's killing, try, trying to kill David, and why would God even put that in there? Just say, whatever, the end result. In other words, get to the point. No, there's a point as you get to the major point. So what's, what do we learn from that? Come on, think. What have you learned? You just, you just heard it. How do we digest it and learn something? Number one, David 
then started singing in Spanish, Dios ha sido bueno, Dios ha sido bueno, Dios ha sido bueno, bueno es Dios. You know what that means? God has been good. I was chopped meat. I had no chance. And God had the Philistines attack, prompted them, so that Saul, who was going to kill me, got pulled away, and I lived another day. So Dios es bueno, as I told you, means God is good, but Dios ha sido bueno. Look back now. Come on, look back. God has been good. Look back on your life. Some of us are only alive today because of God's mercy, God's preservation. Come on. I mean, I mean, we're all alive because of God, but did we not have situations where it could have easily gone the other way? And we'd be in shambles emotionally, our name dishonored, dead in the hospital, not because of us. God did this for David. God pulled Saul away, which goes to show when God is going to preserve us, come on now, stop worrying. Let's, you and I, stop worrying. We're living to the last day God says we're going to live, period. How can, we, how can we die before God says we should die? He's God. It's not David's time. I was reading that uh, in my devotions yesterday. And they went to get Jesus, and, and, and they were so mad at him. But even at one time, picked up stones to stone him. But he passed by. Why? His hour had not yet come. What hour? The hour that God had marked out for him to have his last breath on the cross for you and me. I know, but the new COVID, come on, just take whatever precautions you feel are wise and then just live, bless, speak, pray. Here's the other thing that I learned from this. And David escaped and he's still on the run. Got to go hide out in Engedi, wherever that is. I think it's near somewhere near Newark, New Jersey. And what does that teach us? You can be God's anointed and on the run. You can be one of God's children and in a very precarious position through no fault of your own. Tell me one thing David did wrong that he should be running around and hiding in caves and deserts, nothing. But it's like what we learn in the book of Acts with Paul. In one city he goes, they try to kill him. He goes to another city. He's doing a little bit better. Then the guys from the first city come after him to persecute him and stir the town up against him, and he's in prison. He's getting beat. But where's the victory? I'm speak to that thing. No, stop it. Sometimes we suffer with him so we can reign with him. People who tell you it's all a walk in the park and, and, and peaches and cream when you serve a bowl of cherries, when you serve the Lord. They don't read their Bible. They're just telling you what they think you want to hear. And they call it victory, dominion. Well, trust me, none of us are more choice to God than David. And look what he permitted to happen. And the Apostle Paul. So let's not get our feathers rustled, if you have feathers. Just ruffled. They, it is what it is. So I'm going through a bad season. You're going through a bad season, whatever's happening. But God is with us. He's going to bring us through. My wife and I were telling, talking to each other earlier today, the song that um, some uh, preacher in Arkansas wrote. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a something to get a hold of me. And the, the thought being that God uses trouble to draw us closer to him, to learn to trust him. Come on, let's do it. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, God willing. Amen.